Bible says, you can check the scriptures, the Bible about premarital sex. Um, the Song of Solomon is also called the Song of All Songs. It is bold and positive endorsement by God of marital love in all its physical and emotional beauty. It tells the story of the viewpoint of young love, so passionate, yet it assumes such young love will mature into an enduring emotion that will sustain two people as they grow old together. Assumes. So going into it in the Bible and the scripture saying, you know, two people get together, we assume you're going to go through with it, get married, move on. Doesn't always happen that way. There is love as created by God to dwell in a man and a woman. Um, in chapter 8, verse 6, it says, And in the end we need the involvement of God in our marriages to make sure love is a reality. Chapter, chapter 8, verse 6, um, says, Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong, as death, jealousy is cruel, as the grave. The coals, therefore, are coals of, of fire, which have a most vehement flame. That means that the, the sanctity of marriage is the strongest. Where jealousy can lead, can lead you on the path, just like death can lead on the path. Marriage is, is right there. The love story itself can be a little hard to follow, so we're going to try to make this as simple as we can. There's three speakers in this story. There's the beloved, which is the maiden. There's the lover, which is Solomon. And then there's the friends that are the ladies. The order of happenings is not listed. These are poems, and some of the poems are recordings of dreams and not real events. On the top, we find it hard to credit Solomon. And why? With such love and devotion. Why is it hard to credit Solomon? He lived in an age where multiple wives, acceptable, acceptable especially for rulers. He lived in an age where every time a treaty was made, a woman became part of the agreement. What's that mean? That means if you want, if Solomon, if you came up to Solomon and said, you know, Solomon, dude, let's talk. Don't make war on my land. And Solomon said, okay, but you're going to give me one of your wives as part of the agreement. Or... Solomon, you know, your taxes are way too much. We can't pay them. I'm going to give you the check to calm them down. And Solomon would go, I see. So how do I lower your taxes and you give me one of your women? So he acquired all these women and they were all, they were all, um, for making treaties and, and for his political gains. And Solomon wrote this song while he was still young, and yet by this time, if you go to if you go to chapter six, verse eight, he had sixty queens, eighty concubines. Well, that's a thousand women. Now the men the men that are tuned into this broadcast and, and, and here here in the church, how hard is it to keep one woman in tow. So imagine having a thousand of them and none of them were for love. They were all because Solomon made deals and they were all political quests and political gains. They were political trade-offs and they weren't the fruit of his love. But then love does find him. It seems from chapter 8 verse 11 that Solomon had a vineyard and it was away from Jerusalem. It was in the country of Shalmite. And part of which he leased out, he had a family, uh, to a family of brothers and a sister. It was the brothers that made the sister work. She becomes heavily tanned, dark brown, so different to the ladies in the king's court. And it was there in the vineyard that the king first met her. Not as a king, but as just a shepherd tending his, tending his uh, vineyard. Solomon looks at her, she's different from the rest. Her hands are hardened by the work she's doing. 
she's darkened, tanned because of the of, of the of the of, of her working in the vineyards in the sun, and she's different. So Solomon starts to go after her. He begins to court her, and with, and without telling her who he really is, and then he returns back to Jerusalem. While Solomon is in Jerusalem. She has a, in chapter 3, um, she has a record of the dream and, and about um, when, he, when she went looking for him but couldn't find him. But in chapter 3, verse 6, onward, Solomon returns for her in his finery, all dotted up and all, know, all knowing that he was the king and how rich he was. He went from his, just his plain old everyday clothes, working clothes to the king's garbs and the sashes. Um, and then from then, on, from, from then on, the separate songs take us to a palace prepared for the wedding, then to the intimate times after the wedding. Then a time when he has to go away on business. And in chapter 5, verse 2 through 7, she has a nightmare over her lover's absence. And the scriptures you can follow along in your Bibles, church. Um, I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved, the knock of saying, Open to me, my sister, my dove, my undefiled, for my hand is fulfilled with dew, and my locks with the, with the drops of night. I have put off my coat, how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, how shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand, by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved, my hands dropped with mirth, and my fingers with sweet-smelling mirth upon the handles of the, of the lock. Open to my beloved, but my beloved was withdrawn in himself and was gone. My soul, my soul failed when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen then went about the city, found me, they smote me, and they wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. That was the nightmare that she had over her lover's absence. But he does return, and he, does, and he comes back and praises her beauty. That's the simple story from the scriptures. But as I said the start, there's a second reason why God put... The, uh, put this in, in the Bible. And in the Old Testament, Israel is regarded of the bride of the Lord. Uh, make it out in your Bibles. If you read Jeremiah 2, you don't have to do it now. When God says to his rebellious people, I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert, through a land not sown. Then in the New Testament, the church is seen as the bride of Christ that God ordained pure and perfect relationship of a husband with a wife beautiful in itself is also God gave illustrations of the depth of relationship and, and the depth that Jesus desired to have like the story though he is king he came as a human being he didn't come to this woman as king and say I'm King Solomon come with me he came as an everyday human being to tend his vineyards and fell in love with her. Um, he came as a human king, as a good shepherd. He sought each of us in order to take back, to take us back with him. And the wonder of this illustration is that Jesus, upon each of us, with a love that is beyond explanation, that Jesus comes to us, and if we love him and, to and truly love him. He will take us back to the kingdom with him. The maiden in the song was aware of her inferiority. She knew she was 